Nice walleye. Boy, he's feisty. That's a good one. There you go. All right. Nice fish. Nice fish. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Angles Experience. Today we're going to be crankbaiting walleyes. I got my dad with me. We're going to be going along the shoreline looking for any rock structure we can find. It's the middle of spring right now. These guys should be on a big feed, so stay tuned. We have a few hints for you today. Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Setter Rods, the American way. Sidewinder planer boards, fight the fish, not the board. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Easy Loader, all boat trailers are not created equal. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. Another one on the Lucky Craft current, guys. It's working. Not a bad fish right there. I mean, he just pummeled that thing when he hit it. There we go. Nice, nice crankbait fish right there, guys. Well, he got it up right there. Pliers on that one. That hook out of there. go. Right. Another good one guys. Nice thick fish, healthy. Right about 18 inches or so. All right, buddy. Slide you back over. Good one, Dad? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Boy, he's on rainy. That's a nice little crazy fish. Oh, there you go again, everybody. Wild guy on the crankbait. Good old crankbait. Yeah. Working good today. Oh, he's out. Watch him, Dad. Watch, I got him. I got him. Hang on, buddy. Nice walleye. Yeah, they're chunky. Nice thick fish. All right, bud. Get you back. There he goes. Cranking for walleye can be a real critical timing thing. What we're doing here today, this particular lake that we're fishing, the water's real stained. It's a real muddy water. And what that enables me to do is crank until about noon, one o'clock, until the sun gets extremely high, and then those fish pull off. And when you're on your lake or reservoir, the thing that's going to determine when you should crank and when you shouldn't cr crank is your water clarity. We have a reservoir here that we fish quite often, and the water's gin clear. On that reservoir, we get on that water at dark in the morning, and we can only crank until about 7 or 8 o'clock until the sun starts coming up. Once that light starts to penetrate the water, those walleye move off. And then again at night, 7.30, 8 o'clock, when the sun's gone down and it's starting to cool off, we'll crank from that point in time all the way 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. 
The thing to remember is just check your water clarity. If it's real clear on a particular reservoir you're going to fish, you want to get up early to crank. I don't want to be getting a lot of emails saying, hey, Seth, I cranked all day long and didn't get anything. Well, a lot of times when you got clear water, you got to get out of bed early or you got to stay on the lake late. Nice little wall eye. Nice little fish. All right, buddy, slack it back. Fish on. I'm coming. <laughs> That's a nice one. Another cranker, guys. Crank is working. Nice 17 inch fish. Maybe 18. A little chunky eater. Head chicken bat. This feels like a pretty good fish. Ooh. You got that net pop? This is a good one. He's staying down. He's right there. Ooh, pulling line, good. Oh look at that one guys. That's a nice fish right there on the crank. Ooh, that's a big one. For this lake, this is a big fish, guys. Look at there. Okay. Ooh, easy. I got the drag real loose. That's the key with these cranks. They won't pull it out of his mouth. Get him down. All right. There you go, guys. That's what can happen when you go crank bait and walleyes. For this, for this lake, that's a pretty good fish. That's a nice thick one. Nice stick across the back there. Got that Lucky Craft crank right in the side of his mouth. That pattern right there, guys, just to let you know, that's what they call an American Shad. And what makes it so unique, what Lucky Craft has done is they've really got the detail down. You pay a little bit more money for these cranks, but if you look in the sun, you can actually see a scale pattern going right there. And what's, what we're imitating, they put a lot of fingerling rainbow trout in here. Even though this is an American shad color, with the pink belly and the green back, we're imitating those rainbow trout. That's what we're doing with that bait. But that's just that scale pattern. Nice walleye. Good lure. Good times with my dad. Get that fish back in the water here. Here he goes. I want to talk to you a second here about bait profiles and you know crankbaits come in a lot of different shapes they come in a thin middle presentation they come in this deeper bellied presentation here they come in a fat body and what you have to determine when you go out a lot of times what you'll run into is a lot of your cranks that you buy have this shape right here this is a typical style crankbait this is a lucky craft what they call a cb 200 in that american shad pattern and this is the cb mr flat in the american shad pattern and the major difference, we started out today throwing this bait. 
and it was catching a few fish, but not as good as it should have. The color was working, so what I did is just a quick profile change. I knew that they were chasing cranks. What I did, I knew they liked that color, but what I changed out, if you look at the backs on these, this is a thinner profile bait versus this fatter profile bait. If you look at the profile this direction, it's thicker in the belly than this bait is right here. And what you'll find a lot of times is if you go with a bait that's of a thinner profile like this guy, the fish tend to eat it more. What happens with a thinner profile bait, it's easier to swallow for that fish. Even though this bait is deeper this direction, it's thinner across the back. And that's one of those little change ups that you need to keep in mind when you're out fishing. If you're hitting a few fish with that style of crank and you go, hey, uh, I want to get away from it, don't get away from it to try to catch more fish. What you want to do, keep the same lure profile, just go with that skinnier back. Thin that bait down, and that was the difference. We put this guy on, all of a sudden they started biting like mad. Nice little walleye on the crank right there. He's a dark one, he's been up shallow. Yeah, he's a little yep. Got that crank in his mouth right there. Alrighty, buddy. Nice fish. Alright, bud. A little dark. Yep. Folks, one of the mistakes that people make when they're fishing with these crankbaits is they throw it out and they just do a real steady retrieve. And at certain times of the year when the water's really cold and just a nice steady pace, that'll catch fish. But the thing you gotta remember, if you watch fish swim in their natural environment, you know, whether you watch a little sunfish or perch swim around by a dock, nothing swims in a steady motion in a straight line. It's always darting around. So what we wanna do is you wanna do the same simulation to your crankbait. And the way you do that is you just reel, pause, reel, pause. You can jerk the rod tip a little bit. I prefer to just reel and pause, reel, pause, pause, reel. Just throw some action into it so that bait's moving around. It's not moving in a steady line. And it goes the same for you if you're trolling, long lining. Hold the pole in your hand and just twitch the pole. Just remember that nothing in this natural environment swims in a straight line at a steady pace. It's always darting around. So make sure to apply some action to that bait when you got it out there in the water. Walleye. <laughs> well folks, you're not going to believe this. Dad decided he'd try for some largemouth real quick while we're out here fishing. And in that fish's mouth is a 7 inch Berkeley ribbon tail worm. Trying to catch a bass in that brush pile and he caught a walleye. We just can't get away from the walleye today. Hang on buddy. Got him good up there in that flesh. All right, little dude, see you later. Oh, it's a nice large mouth. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, look at that, Dad. Nice large mouth. Well, folks, we changed it up. The walleye fishing slowed down a little bit. And my dad kept saying, hey, take me over to the pads. I want to throw my black worm in there and look at what he did. <laughs> look at that right there, guys. Changed her up from the walleye. Pop's got himself a nice big large mouth. Been a long time since I've seen one of that size for yeah. a while. There you go, Pop. Grab your fish, buddy. All right, so we'll take a picture with you, Dad. Nice bass, Pop. Hey, Pops wanted to stop at the lily pads because he felt there was a bass there. I'll be danged, he was right. Sometimes you gotta listen to the old man. He knows what he's talking about. Well, folks, we're on to another bass. We, after Dad caught that one, we decided, hey, walleye fishing's a little slow, so I tied up a Senko. We're working these pad pockets. That's one of the things about being a diverse fisherman. You know, if one thing slows down, we could probably find some, find some walleyes and whatnot, but hey, we switched over here and we got some bass and what the heck, the day's staying active for us. Not as big as my dad's, but hey, I'll take them. This little chunky fish on the Senko. Nice fish. Hey, not bad. I'll take them all day long. Yep. They're living in the pad. Oh, I got him up good. Boy, buddy, you got it. Oh, got you hooked, tore it up. There we go. Nice little chunky bass. Not quite as big as the old man's, but hey, we'll keep trying. See you later, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, all we're doing right here is just like this morning when we were cranking, we're cranking on a specific structure. We're going down the shoreline. We're looking for any points, any rock piles that are out off the shoreline, any type of structure that we can find. But this morning we were concentrating the walleyes on rock, rock structure. We're doing the same thing here. What we've got is we've got big bull rushes and then they, they, they transfer into these lily pads and there's just pockets of these down this lake. And everybody's focused on this lake for fishing for walleyes. And my dad grew up on this lake years and years ago and uh, everybody fishes this lake for walleye and crappie. And he said back years ago, he used to catch big bass in here and, and I haven't been back to this lake for probably 25 years. This is the first time I've been back here. And uh, dad just happened along and said, hey, let's go try those lily pad pockets. And all we're doing is we're doing just like this morning when we were cranking specific rock piles and points for walleye. Now we switched over to weed growth. And if you look inside of the weeds, these, these lilies have structure within them. You're looking for points, pockets, anything that's a little bit different within that pad. And that's all we're doing. We just changed up. We've got soft plastics on now. We're fishing the structure, but it's weeds. And we're picking up bass and having fun. go folks another bass that one looks pretty good oh man ooh look there guys oh, yeah that's a good one hey we started out walleye fishing pops and we end up with this that's not bad huh no <laughs> i'll take it all day long and he ate that sanko up that's a good fish Ugh. you getting pops All right. All right. See, I knew he'd get one bigger than mine. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm quite there yet. Got that Senko right there in the side of his mouth. He's been caught before, guys. You can see we're... I gotta be careful with this guy here. Get this hook out of here without hurting him. This is a this is a product to catch and release, folks. He's, he's pretty rough looking in the mouth right here. But he'll heal up and be just fine. Somebody caught that fish and enjoyed it and let it go. I came in here with my dad, caught him. Now I'm gonna let him go. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. You little chunky devil. See you later.
There's one right there. Got him. Oh, look at that one, guys. I don't know. He doesn't want to come in. Look at that one, folks. That's a good one. Nice, healthy fish. Okay, got him. Ah, nice one, guys. Any of that one pop? Yep. Nice good fish, fish, huh? Nice mark. Purple Senko right there, guys. Turn them up. Converted a walleye day into one heck of a bass day. It's all about the change up. All right, partner, let's get you back in the water. Well, folks, it's about 90 degrees out. Dad looks like a lobster, and I'm sure I do too. The uh, bass fishing slowed down a little bit, and I think we're gonna call it a day. It's about four in the afternoon, and uh, we've got a couple for dinner. We kept a couple of smaller ones. We don't like to freeze them up, so we're gonna go home and have a little fish, fish fry tonight and uh, put a little lotion on and probably have a cold shower, and I'm gonna have a cold shower because uh, you better believe it. I feel like I'm cooking right now, so. A little warm. Yep, so. Did you have a good time, Dad? Oh yeah, no, always, I, always. I enjoyed having always. you out. Hey always. folks, I hope you, I hope you like the uh, change up with the bass and the walleye. The old man was right when he said to go over to them lily pads. So we changed it up, caught some more fish. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next week.